whenever there's a big upheaval in our society or world or government, you know, we always want to ask, what are we going to do about it? What are we going to do to make it fair? Uh, what is the church going to do about it? Uh, when is the church going to step up? The church needs to, to set our country straight, our world straight. Uh, we need to be uh, treated fair. In the Swedish Lutheran uh, bishops, uh, Bo Geertz's novel, Faith Alone, which has been recently translated into English, uh, Geertz describes a real situation in Reformation-era Sweden where the king, King Gustavus, uh, in order to pay for as many programs and wars, uh, literally takes or steals all the silver and precious uh, linens and fabrics from the churches, so, so all the pyramids. And, and we know from, from working and trying to get new ones, these, these are really expensive. Um, and at the same time, the government is trying to force the Lutheran pastors uh, to, 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 to not preach the gospel as much anymore. Uh, and there's nothing fair about this. And so many of the, the priests and pastors are, are, are up in arms about this and actually spur on the peasants to rebellion and revolt against the government and, and an insurrection. And there's one Lutheran pastor who is actually forced to hide his wife because of the danger to her. And, and after he makes sure he and his child are safe, he's about to head back to his parish. And, and another pastor thinks he's crazy for doing this, for going back. And he asks, what are you going to do? And he responds, essentially, I'm going to go preach the gospel. The gospel is the good news that God does not charge us with our sins, but declares us forgiven and innocent and righteous for Jesus' sake. We call this God's grace. And grace has to do with perspective. Where do I stand in relation to God? What, uh, who am I in the sight of God? What am I worth? What do I deserve? In the parable, a parable, Jesus tells that we see a number of different people and their perspective on who they are and what they think they deserve. At the end of the workday, the landowner starts with the last and continues to the first and, and does something unexpected, unfair. He gives the same wages to each one of them, no matter how long or hard they work. He gives each one a denarius, which was a fair full day's wages for a skilled laborer. You really couldn't ask for anything more than that. Uh, this would have paid for everything you needed for that day, and then, and then some. Uh, no one could expect anything more. But those who had worked the longest began to grumble and complain. They said, those who worked, uh, were last worked only one hour, and you made them equal to us, who have endured the burden of the day and the scorching heat, it's not fair. You know, if we're honest, we'd have to sympathize with those last or those first uh, workers. All of us would. We all have a deep sense of entitlement. You know, you hear it in the smallest children. That's not fair, you know, on the playground. How many times have, have you said it this week? I've said it. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, if you had... Bet stock against game stock. I'm, I'm sure you said it. Uh, and uh, what, what else? Uh, about the government and, and what they're doing? It's not fair. Um, you know, th this is often why uh, we feel uh, that we've been treated unfairly and, 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 and we want others to get in on it too. And this is often why churches often become nothing more than political sounding boards, uh, especially when it's perceived that the, the government or the world is is, is, is against us and, and taking things away from us unfairly. But the nature of the kingdom of God is absolutely not fair. It's why Jesus tells this parable. Uh, it's not the, the church's job to, to make sure everyone in the world is treated fairly or that even that we are treated fairly, although we do pray for that to be the case. Rather, like the one pastor in Sweden the church preaches the grace of God. When the landowner hired the, the, the first workers, he agreed, they agreed to work for a denarius. 
they signed a contract, a covenant. And when the owner goes out again to hire more workers, he doesn't, doesn't change the deal, but he says something different. He says, I will give you whatever is right. The Greek word there for right is righteous or just or justified. And it's this word that becomes the lens through which we view the rest of the parable and how we understand it. The owner goes out again and again and does the same thing. He goes out one more time an hour before closing and, and, and he finds some people who've been standing by idly by all day. They've been doing nothing. And he asks, why are you still unemployed? And they respond, because no one hired us. The implication is that these people uh, were, were so lazy that no one wanted to hire them. They're making excuses for, for them not being there. But the owner tells them, you also go and work in the vineyard. So when the owner begins to give out the wages, starting with the last, and, and gives them a denarius, the ones who are hired first uh, are, are drooling at this point, and they're fantasizing just how much they're going to get. Man, if those guys got a denarius and they only worked one hour, those lazy people, how much more uh, am I going to get? Man, I'll get 12 times as much. That would be fair. But these first workers, their perspective is based on them, on what they deserve, on their standing, on their relation to the landowner. Everything is based on them. And so when they don't get what they think they deserve, they grumble and complain, even though what they got was entirely just. So one of them goes to the landowner to set him straight. But the landowner, the Lord, is very pastoral. And he says, friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not make an agreement with me, a covenant with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go. I want to give to the last one hired the same as I also gave to you. Can't I do what I want with my own money? Or are you envious because I am generous? Now, from my perspective, because it's based on me, the landowner wasn't being very generous. But remember, he had agreed to give a just wage. Those men who were hired last received more than they ever deserved. But the wage wasn't based on them. It never was, but on the landowner, on him. And the word that the, the landowner uses, generous, is the Greek word agathos, or gracious. And this teaches us something very important about God's grace. Grace is about perspective. But not my perspective, God's. Grace is God's attitude, His perspective towards you that is purely based on the giver, on Him, and not on the receiver, on me. However, the, most, the view that most Christians have about grace is that grace is, is kind of like gasoline. You know, without it, my car doesn't run. If I put some in, then I can get where I want to go. Uh, so most Christians think that all I need from God is, is a little bit of gas, a little bit of grace, and I can get to where I want to go. But the assumption is that I can get to where I want to go. I bought the car. I keep it clean. I just, just need a little bit of grace. Uh, however, this is a perversion of grace. God's grace has absolutely nothing to do with you or me or anything that, that we do about keeping our, ourselves clean and nice and, and working hard. Um, this is why God's grace is amazing. It's not earned. It's not deserved. And God definitely didn't look ahead in time to see how well I was going to maintain my car or or, or when I was going to believe. Grace is not something that God gives me so that I can accept Him. Grace is an attitude of undeserved love. And the key word is undeserved. As U.V. Corin, one of the founding fathers of our church body, 
said, According to Scripture, it belongs to the essence of grace to be free. For if grace is not free, then grace is no more grace. Grace is not something that God gives to us. Rather, grace is how God deals with us. Through grace, God gives us everything else. I've heard it described this way. Mercy is that God does not give us what we do deserve. But grace is that God gives us what we don't deserve. Grace is imputed to us. That is, the way that we receive the just or righteous wage of forgiveness, life, and salvation, and all the blessings of God. You know, if you talk to anyone who has any thoughtful objection to Christianity, it doesn't usually have to deal with the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. The factual evidence of the resurrection is there. Rather, if someone has a, 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 a conscious objection to Christianity, they've decided to reject it, it usually has to do with this concept of grace. It is completely offensive. What do you mean people are getting away with something? What do you mean God rewards awful, sinful people with forgiveness in heaven? Not because of anything good they've done? But this is such good news. Because when fairness is on our terms, we are like little gods. If I think I deserve heaven because of something in me, then I've switched out the true God for the God of me. And on earth, the God of me always ends in bitterness. The bitterness of being unfairly treated. It will be no different eternally. Those who are first will be last. Grace, however, is good news for the sinner who knows that he or she is a sinner and is unworthy of help or forgiveness or salvation. Grace is good news for those whose lives have been devastated, who have endured shame and ridicule and have had family desert them due to the gospel. They will receive not just 12 times as much, but 100 times as much in the kingdom of heaven. Those who are last will be first. Grace is not felt, but promised. So if we are treated unfairly, so be it. Let the world take everything away, our silver, our families, our homes, our lives. Through grace, we still have everything and more. For while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Not when we were really good with our car all clean, maintained, and ready for gas, and our work all nicely done. But while we were ungodly and broken, coping with our daily failures, idly standing by, wondering what we could possibly do, the Lord comes by and He says, You, go into my vineyard, and I will give you what is righteous, what is just. And we all together receive the same gift, purely out of God's grace, and we receive it today. The gift of forgiveness in what is our highest good, the highest gift that we can receive in the bread that is Christ's body and the blood that is, uh, the, the wine that is Christ's blood and the covenant or the testament of God's grace. In Jesus' name, amen.